There's no way for anyone who has never competed in MMA to understand the emotions that come with a win, but sometimes that emotion brings out the worst in these athletes. As always, if you guys enjoy the video, please be sure to let us know by giving it a like and hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Now, without further ado, and ranked in no particular order, here are fighters who showed no respect after a win. Number 9. Enzo Gracie vs. Ben Spikers To kick things off, we have the truly abysmal finishing sequence, which saw Enzo Gracie score a submission over the judoka Ben Spikers but his victory was far from the most relevant part of the story. The two had some real beef after their initial meeting at the press conference, but when Gracie refused to let go of the submission, it was clear that he was taking things way too far. I was just going to say, Todd, we hadn't seen too many blows. He then lashed out and tried to kick Spikers when the referee pulled him off. And then, to make matters worse, as he walked away, Henzo intentionally stood on Spikers' head. He later apologized for his actions. The damage was already done. Gracie went on to have a great reputation within the fighting world, but this remains one of the darker moments on his otherwise stellar resume as a fighter and later as a coach. Number 8. Shinya Aoki vs. Mizuto Hirota Shinya Aoki doesn't just submit his opponents. Is it gonna be an early finish? Is it taken? No, he's going to sleep! He's going to sleep! This infamous Japanese fighting legend can also be counted on to spring up some wild post-fight antics. And when he took on Mizuto Hirota, some past words caused there to be something of a feud bubbling under the surface. But when Aoki managed to snap Hirota's arm with a Kimura, it still wasn't enough. Fans were left shocked when he decided to rub it in even further, smiling while waving his middle finger in his opponent's face as he was lying there on the floor with his arm snapped. We This is just another level of cold, and a moment that would follow him for many years afterwards. There's no denying that he is one of the most celebrated figures in Japanese MMA, but you just can't excuse this type of behavior. Number 7. Khabib Nurmagomedov vs. Conor McGregor Okay, look, we know. Conor McGregor has done more than his fair share to really make an enemy of Khabib Nurmagomedov. I am going to truly, truly love putting a bad, bad beating on this little glass jaw rat. But regardless of who started the the feud, or who crossed the line the furthest, Khabib definitely lost the run of himself after submitting McGregor at UFC 229. With more eyes on this UFC event than any other in history, Khabib decided that causing Connor to tap just wasn't enough for him, and that his team deserved punishment too. And after getting into a shouting match with Dylan Danis, Connor's training partner, Khabib caused a full-on brawl by vaulting over the side of the octagon to attack him. Before anyone knew what was going on, the chaos had spilled into the cage as well, with Connor coming under fire from Khabib's teammates. This was a moment that has no equal in the sport, one of the wildest nights the UFC has ever known. How do you feel about Habib, his actions, just him? Habib diving over was ridiculous. What caused you to, to jump over the cage and, and to go after uh, Connor's team? I know this is not my best side. I don't understand how people can talk about I jump on the cage. What about he talk my, about my religion, he talk about my country, he talk about my father, he come to Brooklyn and he broke bus. He almost killed a couple people. What about this? Number six, Michael Venom Page versus Evangelista Cyborg Santos. Look, there's every reason to believe that Michael Venom Page didn't realize just how severe of an injury he had caused to his opponent, Evangelista Cyborg Santos, when he decided to throw a pokeball at him. You went in for a flying knee, and I, Michael, I heard this unnatural crackling sound. It can come back. Basically, I had fractured his skull, so his skull had kind of concave. In the moment, I didn't hear any sound. I actually thought I must have caught his nose or something. But either way, damaging your opponent's skull so badly that it causes the end of their fighting career is one hell of a way to win. This is probably the most gruesome flying knee ever landed in mixed martial arts. And the whole thing was just capped off on a real sour note because of MVP celebration. Good for a viral moment, sure, but a pretty awful way to end someone's time as a fighter. Santos, of course, never fought again. And while MVP has indeed moved to become a very good member of the welterweight top 10 in Bellator, he certainly certainly lost a few fans with this one. Number 5. Brock Lesnar vs. Frank Mir 2 You can't make a list of the all-time great UFC post-fight interviews without mentioning Brock Lesnar and his famed horseshoe dig at Frank Mir. After succumbing to an early submission in fight number 1, Lesnar was more experienced and far more comfortable in an MMA cage when they fought for a second time. And after putting Mir out to defend his title, Brock took to the microphone to tell the fans all about Frank's horseshoe and what he did with it. Frank Mir had a horseshoe up his ass! I told him that a year ago. 
I pulled that some bitch out and I beat him over the head with it. He then proceeded to tell the world exactly what he was thinking about doing later that night, which of course had nothing to do with Frank Mir, but we decided to add it anyway. I'm gonna sit out with my friends and family, and hell, I might even get on top of my wife tonight. See y'all later. Number four, Jorge Masvidal versus Ben Askren. If you talk enough trash to a fighter like Jorge Masvidal, yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah, they need to keep the idiot away from me. I he's so dumb. How do you beat him? Any way I want. How do you think? I dominate him whole time. There's a very good chance that you'll awaken something truly savage within him. I don't like to do it. I just want to hurt, torture that guy a minute. Or at least that was the case back in 2019, when Ben Askren put his unbeaten record on the line for a highly publicized welterweight showdown against Gamebred. So what did Jorge do? Well, he certainly let his fighting do the talking, and it took him just five short seconds to finish Ben Askren with a flying knee. But even with the fastest UFC finish of all time under his belt, Jorge was not fully satisfied. Instead, he decided to rub it in by taunting the clearly unconscious fighter some more. Before before then flopping to the mat in one final brutal display of mockery. Any regrets at the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? So you can do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want, but after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face so you and guys like you could see it and be like, maybe I don't talk so much shit because when I cross one of these real motherfuckers, they're gonna make me pay for it, man. It's not over for Ben either. He still has to deal with me. If I see him at Whole Foods, I'm gonna still slap that dude up because I don't like him. Number three, Israel Adesanya versus Paolo Costa. Israel Adesanya knows how to create a real life meme moment. And after Paolo Costa talked Walked a boatload of trash ahead of their middleweight title fight. And the Sana is the most shameful champion I have seen ever. I will destroy him. I will hit him so badly. I will kill him. He decided to offer up a little payback after scoring a second round TKO. Now, look, we're not saying that these two had to make up post fight, but as Paulo Costa laid there totally dazed after a tough defeat, Izzy definitely did his best to embarrass him. And yeah, it wasn't the best look for the sport, especially for a champion. It was clear that these two just didn't like each other. But did it really have to result in a display of behavior like that? Maybe, maybe not. We'll let you guys be the judge of that. I came here to talk about the reaction the human trash did after a fight. I disapprove 100%. Number two, John Jones versus Daniel Cormier won. John Jones and Daniel Cormier were two polar opposites that were always going to clash to some degree. You are the biggest <laughs> I've ever seen, for sure. But the sheer hatred these two guys built up for one another over the years was truly a wild thing to experience. I wish they would let me next door so I could spit in your face. You know I would absolutely kill you if you ever did something like that, you right? Could never, you could never kill me. Oh, I, I bet you I could. Jones seemed to have a sixth sense when it came to getting inside his competitive rival's head. And in the final seconds of their first fight at UFC 182, with the win comfortably in the bag, Jones decided to add insult to injury, celebrating before the bell had even sounded. So when DC then dropped his hands in acceptance of the fight being over, John immediately switched back into gear, landing a pair of sneaky punches. It was a bit of an ugly tactic, but to be fair, it was also entirely within the rule set. Then, to take it one step further, Jones taunted Cormier with no shred of remorse, keeping this feud as heated as ever up until their eventual rematch. I don't like Daniel Cormier. I don't respect Daniel Cormier. I hope he's somewhere crying right now. I'm sure he is. Can't wait till he earns his way back so I can whoop him again. Number one, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira and his son. Another appearance from the middleweight champion comes in next, a recent entry from UFC 287. Sure, we've certainly seen the follow-up video that showcases the two embracing backstage, but after the last style bender managed to score a massive knockout over his great rival, he decided to celebrate the moment by using using Alex's famous bow and arrow motion against him. But that's not what gets him the spot on this list. No, the real kicker came when Israel walked over to where Pereira's son and wife were sitting and proceeded to taunt the small child, remembering that Pereira Jr. did the same thing five years ago when his father scored that vicious KO. I'm petty, bro. I remember. So the first time he knocked me out in Brazil, his son came into the ring and then started to just lie dead next to me. And I'm like, you little asshole. I looked for his kid and I, I pointed at him and I saw him and I was like, hey, hey, hey. Just to remind him. Yeah, you heard that right. Adesanya waited five years to get one back over both his fighting rival Pereira and also his very young son. It's a bizarre revenge story. But hey, Adesanya is a pretty bizarre guy by all accounts. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to let us know by giving it a like and hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.